It's 793 AD and a wooden longboat beaches on the shore of Lindisfarne Island, just off the east coast the English county of Northumberland. A gang of armed men pour ashore wearing the sinister horned helmets that were the Viking warriors' trademark. This was one of the earliest and most shocking of Viking raids on Britain. The pagan warriors destroyed the island's monastery and put the monks to the sword. Study of alleged Viking helmets suggests we've been getting it all wrong. Now, that's a true account of what was one of the first and most shocking of Viking raids that plagued the people of the British Isles for three centuries. It horrified people because Lindisfarne also known as Holy Island was a key center of early British Christianity. Alcuin, a Northumbrian scholar, wrote after the attack that Lindisfarne was a place more sacred than any in Britain. But there's one glaringly inaccurate detail in our otherwise authentic account of the ruthless Lindisfarne raid of more than 12 centuries ago. For history and archaeology tell us that no Viking ever wore a helmet with horns sticking out of the side. Yet today most of us would be certain to describe Viking raiders as wearing those mythical horned helmets. Modern culture has persisted in falsely portraying Vikings as wearing flamboyant headgear adorned with sweeping horns. Horn helmets are to be seen in everything from the Asterix stories to the Thor movie franchise, in which Norse gods wear the entirely fictional helmets. Surprisingly, it turns out that this horn misapprehension is of relatively recent provenance. So who can we blame for this sorry misapprehension that Vikings sported horns on their hats? One name springs to the fore the 19th century German composer Richard Wagner. His four-part opera Der Ring des Nibelungen, first staged in the German city of Bereth in 1876, featured lots of Vikings. And they wore horned headgear. Even if you're not entirely familiar with Wagner's work, you probably know one stirring tune from Der Ring des Nibelungen. The Rite of the Valkyries. That features in movie director Francis Ford Coppola's Tour de Force Apocalypse Now. The tune plays as a squadron of U.S. Army helicopters mounts a ruthless surprise attack on a Vietnamese village. So we can take it as read that the idea of horns on helmets as Viking daily wear actually has its roots in the second half of the 19th century. Actually before that, a different myth ruled the roost, one that's still around today and dates back to the 18th century. That's the alternative that Vikings had wings on their helmets rather than horns. But the truth is they didn't have them any more than they had horns. After that origin story in the 1870s, which we can attribute to Wagner's costume designer, one Professor Karl Doppler, the myth gained a seemingly unstoppable momentum. One academic, Professor Roberta Frank of Yale University, has studied the phenomenon. She wrote a paper in 2000 entitled The Invention of the Viking Horned Helmet. Describing what happened after the first staging of Der Ring des Nibelungen, Dr. Frank wrote, within 20 years the horned helmet spelled Viking in advertisements, in paintings, in popular histories and children's books, even on a Scandinavian cruise menu, 23 July 1895, of the Hamburg America liner Columbia. The myth was sailing full steam ahead. Continuing the fiction even became a family affair. Emil Doppler, son of Wagner's costume designer Karl, was an illustrator. He perpetuated the horned helmet fantasy by incorporating it in his drawings. As Dr. Frank puts it, by 1900, the one artifact that, as archaeologists assure us, was never connected with Vikings, had become their signal distinction. Dr. Frank tells us, during the 1890s, the horned helmeted Vikings changed from a series of widely scattered occurrences into a kind of weather. Mass-produced children's books were an ideal medium for imprinting the image on the popular imagination. After all, once impressionable children had swallowed the idea that Vikings wore horned headgear, there was every chance they would retain this fiction for a lifetime. But perhaps we shouldn't be too harsh on those 19th century artists who created the entirely false myth of the Vikings and their horned helmets. For it seems that misconceptions about battle helmet decorations long predate that century. As early as the 1st century AD chroniclers from the Roman era such as Plutarch were writing about Germanic tribes of the time who wore helmets with horns. Of course these Germanic tribes lived 900 years and more before the Vikings unleashed their reign of terror on Europe. But it was easy enough for later writers to confuse tales of Rome's enemies with stories about the Vikings. 
An article by Dr. Andrew Thompson published on the British website Thens of Mercia apportioned the blame to artists rather than historians for this confusion. Dr. Thompson cited an example of Viking horned helmets that predated the Wagner Opera of 1876. He wrote, in the early 19th century, the Swedish artist Gustav Malmström provided the illustrations for an edition of Frithjof's Saga by S.A.S. Tenor. Malmström's illustrations showed, for the first time, the infamous horns on the helmets. Still, it hasn't been just comic books and operas that have perpetuated the myth of horned or winged Viking helmets. Serious archaeology also has something of a rap sheet when it comes to this pernicious historical fiction. Over the years various excavations have discovered horned battle helmets that have been misattributed to Vikings. One example is a helmet that was plucked from the River Thames near Waterloo Bridge in London in 1868. This extraordinary copper alloy artifact, known as the Waterloo Helmet, sports two conical horns. As Dr. Thompson pointed out, this was made of metal so thin that it could only have been for ceremonial use. In other words, it would have been worse than useless in actual combat. In any case, it later turned out that this horned helmet was definitely not from the Viking era. It was in fact dated to pre-Roman Britain, sometime between 150 and 50 BC. That's at least some 900 years before the Vikings took to their raiding ways. Other false evidence came from a discovery known as the Gundestrup Cauldron. The Gundestrup Cauldron came to light in 1891 when it was dug from the Ravemesen Peat Bog in the Danish region of Himmerland. As its name suggests it's not a helmet at all, rather a ceremonial vessel made from silver. But reliefs on the artifact showed numerous figures wearing horned headgear as Dr. Thompson put it. But as with the Waterloo helmet, the devil is in the dating when it comes to the Gundestrup Cauldron. For although this Danish discovery is in a relevant geographical location for the Vikings, the silver vessel actually dates from the 1st century BC, some 1000 years before the accepted era of the Vikings started. Various other archaeological finds have painted a false picture of Viking headgear, which was only exploded when more accurate dating techniques became available. But perhaps the most misleading of all these deceptive historical discoveries came in 1942. For this part of the story we must visit another peat bog. This one is in Vixo sometimes Vexo on the Danish island of Zealand. This bog was called Bronze Moos, and on that day in 1942 a man who was digging up peat felt his shovel clang on something metal. Extricating the object from the ground revealed something extraordinary. For that laborer had just discovered an ancient metal helmet with what can only be described as horns. And there wasn't just one of these helmets there were two. But this unnamed peat cutter had no idea what he'd actually found. As per the website Live Science, he apparently thought the mud-encrusted items were simply some cast-off detritus of no particular significance. How very wrong he was. Fortunately, instead of just chucking them away, he gave them to his boss who stored them, thinking they might be worth a second look. So thankfully the unidentified objects did find their way into the hands of experts at the Museum of Denmark. They soon recognized the supposed garbage was in fact the elements of two helmets of great age. One of these pieces of headgear had been found on a wooden board, suggesting the pair had been placed in the bog as part of some kind of ceremony. The helmets, fashioned from bronze, are mounted with curving horn-like structures which end in knobs. They were discovered in remarkably good condition after their centuries of repose in the peat bog. But are these Viking artifacts? Not according to Dr. Hel van Kold of Denmark's Aarhus University. In January 2022 she told the Live Science website, for many years in popular culture, people associated the Vixo helmets with the Vikings. Dr. Van Kold continued, but actually, it's nonsense. The horn theme is from the Bronze Age and is traceable back to the ancient Near East. And the archaeologist's verdict on the dating of the Vixo helmets is much more than mere assertion. New research published in 2021, in which Dr. Van Kold participated, conclusively proves that the helmets were made long before the Viking era. Since their discovery in 1942 the true significance and age of this pair of helmets had been a mystery. For a start, it's very difficult to ascribe a precise date to metalwork. But eventually an unexpected breakthrough came. One of the staff at the Museum of Denmark was planning to take some photographs of the helmets. 
As the photographer examined them, she spotted something that no one else had. As Dr. Van Kold told Live Science, she noticed that there was primary organic material in the horns and spoke to a colleague at the National Museum responsible for the collection, and they agreed to send a sample for absolute dating. This proved to be a key development. The material was actually the residue of some birch tar that had been applied to the helmets. And unlike metal, this type of organic material can be reliably dated by using sophisticated lab equipment. The technique is to measure the decay of the radioactive isotope carbon-14, which gives precise dating. Previous dating had been solely based on interpreting the style of the helmets. With the results of the carbon-14 test Dr. Van Kold was now able to state with confidence, we now know with this new date, that the helmets were deposited in the bog, perhaps by someone standing on a wooden platform, around 900 BC. That's a good 1,800 years before the time of the Vikings. But a question remained. Why had birch tar been applied to the helmets? The explanation for that is based on some of the symbols embossed on the headgear. These include images of what are likely meant to represent a predatory bird, some kind of hawk. The tar would have acted as an adhesive so feathers and other decorative items could be attached to the helmets. The researchers also believe that the horns, which resemble those of a bull, and the hawk were likely seen as emblems denoting the sun. Similar iconography has been noted by experts far from Denmark and the Mediterranean. Such symbols were used in antiquity in places including the island of Sardinia and the Iberian Peninsula modern-day southern Spain. Dr. Van Kold expanded on the similarities of symbols used in Denmark 3,000 years ago to those found in the Mediterranean at the same time. She said, it's certainly not coincidental there must have been some sort of connection there. And the researchers speculated on just how that connection might have worked in practice. In their 2021 paper the researchers wrote that the sacred sun iconography could have arrived from the Mediterranean via sea travel. The ancient Phoenicians, a people of the eastern Mediterranean, sailed a course that left the Mediterranean eastwards through the Strait of Gibraltar and continued northwards through the Atlantic towards Scandinavia. This trade passage was active from about 3,000 years ago, the very time those helmets were consigned to the peak bog. Dr. Van Kold also said of the Vixo helmets, they were never used for battle. In the Denmark and wider Scandinavia of the Bronze Age, warriors would have worn no helmets at all, or at best only very basic headgear. The helmets would probably have had some symbolic significance and may have been worn by tribal leaders. Speaking of this likely ceremonial use, Dr. Van Kold added, there are many signs of this, and our new dating of the Vixo helmets actually suits this very well this picture of centralization and the importance of political leadership. The academic went on to note that these leaders probably took advantage of religious creeds and unusual iconography, such as the horns to extend the scope of their influence. So there is absolutely zero evidence that the Vikings wore elaborate helmets decorated with either horns or wings when they went into battle. In his brusque verdict on the very idea of this, Dr. Thompson wrote, of course no one in the Viking age would have been stupid enough to attach horns or metallic wings to their helms. Horns would simply allow the helmet to be knocked off the head more easily. So did the Vikings go into battle or on raids bareheaded? The evidence for what headgear they may have worn in battle or on raids is scant indeed. In fact, there is just one helmet in existence that can confidently be described as Viking. It was discovered in 1943 just a year after the Vixo helmets emerged from their peat bog. A Norwegian farmer called Lars Germunbo decided to dig into a puzzling 80-foot-long mound on a farm called somewhat confusingly Germunbo in the south of Norway. Germunbo came across a grave and a hoard of weaponry and armor that was unmistakably Viking. Included among the armor was an almost intact helmet. Dated to around 970, it's the only helmet that's ever been found that is certainly from the Viking era. So what does the Germunbo helmet look like? Well it's made of iron with a plain design that includes simple braces that cross the dome of the headgear. Perhaps the most notable feature is the eye protector attached to the front of the helmet, looking rather like a pair of iron spectacles. But there is not a horn or a wing to be seen. It's a thoroughly practical piece of military kit. 
so the romantic notion that Vikings went on their raids or into battle wearing headgear embellished with fierce looking horns or sweeping wings has been thoroughly debunked. The best we can say from the one helmet we know to be of Viking provenance is that their headgear was unadorned and of practical design. It does make you wonder though. How many other historical facts that we think we are sure of are actually nonsense? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.